You've been the director of Aga Khan Award for Architecture for 16 years, but I understand you've been at the, um, at the Aga Khan Development Network for almost 40 years, is it? Um, I'd love to hear a bit about the, the sort of history of your time here. So I joined here for actually for only a five months um, contract when I was 30. And that was 40 years ago, exactly June 1982. And I was, because I, I'm Iranian, I was there for just a you know, short period of time in Europe and I, I came here. And that five months turned out to be 40 years. So it's been a long time, I would say. I've witnessed the development of the system. I was there when it was the, the Silver Jubilee. That I know that from the time of that. Amazing, amazing. And when I get home today, um, Farouk, my five-year-old is going to be asking me who I met. Um, so if we think about your world today, um, I would love your help in how I should explain to her your role and the Aga Khan Award for Architecture. Um, I'm always uh, uh, very interested in how can a vi what's the, His Highness's vision, mm -hmm. and one of the things, especially which is known because there are two sides of His Highness is he's the Imam for the, his the Murids, but at the same time he is a very important person uh, of our history. And he had a vision, and he chose, after many years, after 25 years of his, you know, the first years of his imamat, he chose how he can have influence above and at another level. And he chose culture, and not only culture, he chose architecture. Mm -hmm. And that was a really visionary, because architecture is one of the very few disciplines that it touches all levels of society. Absolutely, and we're now, what, 45 years into the award, if I'm right, 15th cycle. Yes. Um, so thinking about that um, impact that you've talked about, touching lots of different people in their lives, what were the goals of the award when it was first sort of defined or designed? Uh, the, as far as I've read and I've known, the whole thing of creation, creating the award was the, the way that His Highness for many years being someone who's been building for, you know, for the Jamaat, uh, schools, hospitals, etc., and also doing a lot of other projects, factories, um, hotels. He was always in contact with the architects and he had this question, that that's what he's been saying in some of his uh, interviews, the question that why what we've come from a history which architecture played such an important role in our culture, why the architecture that we have today is so bad? And that's where the question comes. And he was very, he wanted to have that kind of a, to see, first of all, he was questioning why. And that's why that uh, he chose the award for architecture after a, n a number of consultations with a lot of experts. Because this way, we can show good examples. And people do learn from good examples. Mm -hmm. The only thing is we have to define the questions and how it is. And I think that's where he had this vision which I came through. So what he had in mind, how he can have an impact on other people and not only on Jamaat. Yeah, because it's interesting if we think about the award for architecture within the sort of frame of, of AKDN, um, where the mandate is around improving quality of life um, for people. Um, and architecture typically doesn't, you don't think of architecture as being, you know, your typical kind of development priority. Um, you know, you think about health, you think about education, um, the built environment, architecture doesn't really always feature. So I'm just interested to know what's the thinking there? What's, where did that... Well, th this is the whole thing of, uh, of explaining what architecture is. Yeah. You know, a lot of people do say, if you go to a good hospital, built ho hospital which is built well, you can, the doctors can work better, the patients will be, be I mean, in a much better condition. If you go to school, which you're the building of your school, is adapted and it's not bad, mm -hmm. you learn better. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is that architecture has a very direct impact. It's not that it's not the development. It's very wrong to think of development without architecture. And at the same time, you cannot, um, how you say, compartmentalize the quality of life. If there's a quality of life which only is going to be the health mm -hmm. and only to be education and 
only to be the, the monetary level, that is not enough. If you don't have the culture, mm -hmm. it will not bind all these things together. Mm -hmm. And when you talked about one of the things around the award highlighting good practice and sharing and learning from other people's good practice, um, could you share some examples of, of good practice or projects let, that let, have let me put it, to you? Let me put it in a um, historic perspective. Mm -hmm. Today, all the young people through internet, they think that this, the world has always been like that, that you can immediately jump on something and have all the information about it at any moment. 40 years ago, 45 years ago, 50 years ago, that was not the case. You could only learn through either journals and newspapers or the books. Mm -hmm. And what happened is the world of those days, someone in Morocco had no idea what's happening in Indonesia. Yeah. Uh, someone in India didn't know what's in Tunisia or whatever. So uh, one of the main roles of the award was to tell people that someone else and the other part of the world who had the same problem as you has found a solution which was much more maybe intelligent than the ones that you're around and if you, one you can learn from that so that that was the the beginning of the um, the reason of the arc and war to put people in, to know others now how it has an impact the impact is that when you ask a question I don't think any architect wants to do a bad project. The only thing is that the client doesn't know how to say what he wants yeah. and what, he, what rights he has or he, she has. So the whole thing is that you have to find this combination of uh, asking for better. So what I'm hearing is when we're working with architects, if any of us ever are, we should be pushing them for better. It's not a matter of pushing them for better. The whole thing is that asking the right question because um, usually, you know, one has dreams when you have one to do a project, architect project, and maybe what you have in mind is not exactly what can, is the best for you as a person. And also the architect, what he has in mind for someone else might not be the best. So what's very important is to, to create a dialogue, to understand the other person, the other context, and what are the needs, to review it, and then find the best solution for the, 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 that very specific place and context. Any advice that you have for people looking at architecture as a profession? Architecture is hard work like anything else. It is technique but it's one of the fields that you have to go between as I said technique mm -hmm. and also um, creation. Creativity is very important. Whenever they want to work they have to work hard and understand. Understand the context. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that Every architect has to go and see in detail the place that he's designing for because there has been some architects who cannot go. The most important thing is studying and spending time mm -hmm. on the project and on the space and to understand it better. Thank you. Um, and I mean, if we think about the world today and the challenges with the, the environment, context of climate change, etc., what can you share in terms of what you've seen through the award for architecture in terms of how um, how we're responding to this challenge, um, if we're responding to this challenge. I've, sometimes I've got some problems with those trendy words, okay. because right now, for example, some, some, some years ago, sustainability was the buzz. So everybody was looking for sustainable architecture. Then now everybody's talking about climate, mm -hmm. and which are, all these are true. Every single project has to respond to all of these. You cannot come and say, one is more important than the other. So the architect's job is to respond correctly. What is very important is to be not no waste of material, mm -hmm. because that's very important, the materials that you use, uh, the climatic um, situations that you have to have um, the correct way to deal with that specific climate of the place. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing of the intelligence is very important. How intelligently you can choose your approach, mm -hmm. and approach is global, being choice, choice of material, choice of techniques, and also teaching and daring to do new uh, things, which is very important. So if I look at all the projects um, that the Award for Architecture shortlists and, and awards to, um, there's such variation, such innovation as you've just mentioned. Um, is there anything that you see that sort of is a thread that runs through them all? 
Um, what I hope, which I think it exists, is that what all of them they have in, in common is a excellence in approach. You can't look at a project because sometimes the projects which are very excellent in their approach, they're not very photogenic, so the photos do not do justice to the project. No architecture, it means doing something for the society. That's the most important thing. And um, so that's where we can uh, look at the, the essence of the project, that approach, mm -hmm. which is it's just how you get to that point, which is very important. All of them, they have that, it being a big project, as I said, or a very small project. And could you give us some examples of what that approach might look like? Let me, I, I, I'm just coming back from um, a, a ceremony, the Pritzker ceremony, which is an architecture award, which is, it was just created same time as the Archon Award for Architecture, but it's given to an architect, right? So, this time it was given to an architect, Francis Carré, who had won an Archon Award for Architecture in 2004 for a school when he was not known at all. And what he did was he went to his home country of Burkina Faso and he somehow adapted the technology that he had learned in Germany using the local material and teaching people how to build and coming with innovative. There were innovation, there was understanding of the place and also how you become an agent for development. So this approach is very full and complete. You mentioned the Pritzker Prize just now um, and I'm sure there are others I don't know, I'm not an expert in the area, but how does the Award for Architecture distinguish itself from some of these other architectural awards? First of all, we do not give an award to a person this is very important because no project is a product of one person. It's always a client, the builders, the architect, the engineers. Um, a lot of people have, a, have something to do in a project to become um, uh, excellent. So we give an award to a, to a project and not to a person. And this is very important. Second thing, we do research. This is a very big difference between the, all the other awards. We do thorough uh, research on projects. And we're giving an award to a project which is completed and in use. It's just not an idea. We have to go and check it out. This whole thing of going and checking the projects, which we call it the on-site review, mm -hmm. is very unique to the Arkan Award for Architecture. Hazir Imam often talks to us about the value of pluralism and the importance of pluralism. Um, Within the context of architecture and specifically the award, um, how does the selection process um, promote or think about pluralism? Um, pluralism has got this whole notion of inclusiveness. And inclusive architecture is very important. It's the architecture which keeps everyone in. There is a kind of a bringing people together, bringing the whole problems together and solving them. Another thing about pluralism is that you are aware and happy to include others. And I mean, sometimes as in, I know that um, I struggle sometimes to sort of define or understand the concept of pluralism. And I'm wondering if through some examples um, of projects that have maybe won the award or been shortlisted to help understand the concept of pluralism. Some of the most important ones are the social projects where especially in the poor areas of the cities and countries, that when you can see that people of different ethnic, religious, faith, and when they are together, mm -hmm. they live together, and that living together is a part of the pluralism. Um, I can give you an example. For example, once we gave an award to a project which was in uh, the betterment of a uh, upgrading of a slum in Indonesia, and we have given to a number of slum operating program in Indonesia, but that was very specific because it was at the corner of the, you know, in the part of the city which was seen. So there was a, a priest, a Catholic priest, who he br brought together with people of different faiths and brought in artists art, uh, uh, from schools of uh, arts and they together made this whole area much better and acceptable to all. So instead of demolishing it, uh, it was kept and you know even the, the municipality let it be there because it became beautiful and the whole thing is that different people live there together. 
And if we look ahead out, sort of, you know, I mean, you've been directing now for, what, 16 years or so, we said. If we look ahead to the next 16, for example, um, thinking about the value of pluralism, thinking about some of the other things you've highlighted around innovation, what do, what do you see the future holding for, um, for this area? Well, I'm not a fortune teller, but <laughs> I do believe in um, people's capacity. And I think that is something which um, is, is very important. I've actually, I learned a lot of that for the, from His Highness, because I could see that in different sp places, in different situations, how he believed in people's um, uh, capacity and gave them place to, to come with innovations because this is very important of understanding and including people mm -hmm. and helping them to bring up the capacity which the hidden ones mm -hmm. are within them. So this is, I think, it's quite important. And that's why I believe that in the future a lot of problems that we think is biggest problems today will be solved. But the, the problem we have is that is the speed of deterioration. You know, what we're doing to our, our uh, environment and nature, etc. These are very difficult to repair. Mm -hmm. But it will come because we we'll have new ways of doing things. And I do believe that science and people working together will do that, especially with the capacities coming up. And you've had the opportunity to work quite closely with Hazaram at various points in your um, in your career. And have you got any lessons or any learnings from those that exposure? Many, I must say. But there's two things which I've. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's my reading of it. He showed us the true, the being visionary. And being visionary, there are two things which are not important for you. One is time. And sometimes even money. Because everything can be, can be created, you can gain it. But you have to have the right vision and know where you're going. And that is very important because he has always been looking beyond what he others were, um, were supposed to do. So this was the big thing I, I saw him. Because he was not seeing himself only achieving. It's like a president that wants to do everything in his term of the you know, presidency. He, he, he doesn't have a, I mean for me, he doesn't have a term of presidency, he's there and he's there for the future and he's shown that I think. I'm, I'm just again I'm looking at this amazing backdrop behind you of all these wonderful books um, and the art that we're surrounded by. Any, anything in your in your office that you'd like to share with us? So, um, one of the things with the Alcan Award for Architecture is His Highness has been his view was wanted to make sure that everything is he, he was his, for him details are very important mm -hmm. his the whole general thing is important but details so um, the first steering committee, they asked a, a wonderful artist, a German artist who um, lived in Iran and he spoke fluent Farsi and he was a, a specialist in, in Kufic calligraphy to do the award's logo, which is this, this is, and it's the name of Allah eight times reflected. Yeah. And uh, he created the first, uh, this as a trophy. So here there's an interesting story I, 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 I can add is that in 1980, when His Highness has created the Arkan Award for Architecture, the first thing was that we're going to give five awards. So they asked uh, Carl Schlaminger, the artist, uh, to create this trophy. I mean, he had created the, the logo, mm -hmm. but then to create this trophy for the five winners. And so he made them five, and the jury met. And when the jury met, they said, well, the steering committee has said five, but we don't believe that five projects can do all the projects. We're going to choose 15. So Hassan Udin Khan, who was then the convener of the award, he calls his highness and he says, your highness, they're not listening. They're, they're choosing 15 instead of five. And he says, very good, <laughs> give 15. So what happened is that when they made 15, uh, they uh, said, so we didn't have 15 trophies. So they have to keep these for the Chairman's Award. And the Chairman's Award was given the first time to uh, Hassan Fati. He himself was a legendary at the time in architecture. So uh, this is this trophy, I keep one in my office. I've got actually, if you can see, I've got the trophies of all the consecutive uh, cycles. Each time the trophy comes, it's always the same thing. It's the, our, the award logo, which is uh, Allah eight times, but it's reflected. 
So this reflection within is a reflection within reflection in the crystal mm -hmm. that you can see it. So it's, it's a really beautiful piece. When the award was launched back in um, 1977, how was it received? Um, those days, modernism was what was prevailing in the whole world in architecture. And people so, uh, not only people, but architects, professionals, architecture as a building, as a piece. And they were not looking at other aspects of architecture, the social aspects of it, the innovative parts of it. So when the first awards were given in 1980, and it was all over in journals and newspapers all over the world, we had projects like slum upgrading, projects like engineering, um, water towers in Kuwait, for example. We, we had uh, restoration projects. And these, at the time, were not considered as architecture. And this was a kind of, a that in the field of architecture, we just, the award broadened it brought all these aspects of it to it. And also, it, as we give an award to a, a project and not to a, a person, is the contribution of different people, which we talked about it, and how, for example, the architect and a mason could be together. Uh, I've got one piece in my collection, in my uh, museum. Let me see if I can find it. It's, yeah, it's here. Um, this is a journal called Domus, which is a very design-oriented Italian journal. And you can see that there's a face of a um, mason, an Egyptian master mason, who was a winner of, the, of one of the first projects. I mean, he was with the architect. He, they came and received the award from His Highness in Lahore. He never had traveled out of Egypt in his life. And he became all of a sudden world famous, being on the, one of the most designed magazines of the time. So this is very important, that how the award has broadened the concept of architecture in the world. The other thing which people do um, today, it's very common, we talk about the, the social aspects of the, of the architecture, how it has an impact on society. It was the Archon Award for Architecture was pointing those out to the general public through the awards. Mm -hmm. And these are big contributions that as His Highness's initiative has done in architecture. Amazing. And this, um, this award, so you said the first award was in, the eight, in 1980. Um, how did it influence then the development of the Arga Contrast for Culture going forward in the late 80s? Well, one of the, I have to go back a little bit. When the award was created in 1977, the whole thing is that there was not much understanding of what is the, where the Muslim world is and what are the questions in architecture. So um, His Highness and the Steering Committee decided the first time to launch a series of seminars and these seminars were happening in different parts of the world. So it was in Turkey, in Morocco and then for example the first time His Highness and Steering Committee and a lot of people went to China in 19, which that was a historic trip of in architecture knowing China because in 1982 uh, uh, China was, it was not open to the world. So these seminars and these trips they ended up in a series of also publications. Uh, if you would go to the, in 1980s, 70s, to the schools of architecture around the world, you would never f difficultly find any book on architecture of other parts of the Muslim world. So by creating pu these publications, the proceedings of the, uh, of the um, seminars and also the award books, and they were all sent to all the universities around in the Muslim world. So we created a, a source of knowledge which did not exist. So there's a lot there in terms of the legacy of the award and sort of you know really capturing that best practice. So one of the things is that for example um, in 1984 when there was this Archon Award for Architecture seminar in Cairo. So His Highness wanted to leave a present to that city, which has been, he's done that for the other places as well. And that's where the Al-Azhar Park project started. Mm -hmm. So in a way, the Arkan Award for Architecture has been a kind of a scout. It goes, goes first. And when uh, a notion is developed, it becomes a program of its own. So the Historic Cities program was first small projects which was administered by the Arkan Award for Architecture. Same thing with education. Uh, the Arkham program for at Harvard and MIT 
was created because two people, the dean of the School of Architecture of MIT and Professor Grobar, who was at Harvard, they were members of the first steering committee. And they said education is important. So they created this, uh, His Highness established the chairs at this, um, Harvard and MIT. Actually, it was the first time that the two universities were working together on a project. So there's a lot of innovations there. And um, day to day with the award, I mean, the cycle, the, um, the research you mentioned earlier on the projects and then shortlisting, etc. How involved is Hazar Imam in that process? Well, um, in 1977-78, those the, the beginning of the award, he was present every like every two months, if not every month, on all the committee meetings, personally sitting days and days. Well, once the award was established, it was becoming, to, I mean, maybe less, not every two months, but we have got a series of steering committee reports, uh, steering committee uh, meetings, which His Highness is the chairman, he's the chairman, the steering committee changes every three years. And during these meetings, for the two days of the meetings, he is there and he's present. Um, got, Imam has got the saying, say, whenever he talks about architecture, first he starts saying, I'm not an architect. Then when he says, but, that's the whole thing sort of starts because he knows so well, he can read all the drawings, he can see the projects, he can go through the project all the way. And his, uh, his passion for architecture, which has been with him and he, you can see in his different interviews and what he's written about how much he likes architecture. So he's, he was very, very involved. And I think he does, uh, I've, I'm a witness of how he enjoys being with the steering committee members. And he, because he plays a role as not only as chairman, as a member. So he never imposes anything. He always asks questions and he will make sure that what it comes is the decision of a committee and it's not a decision by him. Um, if I may, I'd like to ask a little bit more about your working relationship with Hazra Imam. You've been working closely with this award and with him. Um, do you have any kind of, I guess, uh, anecdotes or stories to share from your working? I've been privileged all these years and there are moments which are very interesting. For example, one of the things is the award ceremonies. The award ceremonies are uh, every three years that you have got the, um, it, in the presence of the presidents and the kings and the highest person in that country, in the host country. It changes every year, so we've, the awards have been trying to go to different parts of the world. In the very early days, it was very important to be in one of the most uh, important architectural um, mm -hmm. monuments of the Islamic world. The first time it was in Lahore, in the um, Shalimar Gardens, and then we were in Humayun's tomb. Top Kabi Palace was opened for the first time to the public event for the award in 1983. So these are important moments, and especially um, the, the presence of the heads of states. When you go to a country, and you, the heads of state comes, and His Highness is uh, received as head of state, the whole media in that country talked about architecture a subject which you do, you, they don't usually don't do. Thank you so much, Farouk, for this conversation. I've learned so much um, and I'm looking forward to hearing more um, about how the shortlisted projects um, get evaluated over the next few months, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.